The Formula 1 World Championship is just that, a world championship, touring many different countries across the globe with some of the world's finest racing drivers, piloting extremely fast, ultra sophisticated cars that fall apart if they actually try and race each other. However, it has its flaws. While the championship does visit North America, South America, Europe, Asia and Australia, there is one notable omission, Antarctica and also Africa. Bruh. Now, while there are definitely a few things that inhibit the world's most expensive sport from visiting this vast continent, there is definitely a good case for its return. And I guess with new Grand Prix likely to pop up in places like Saudi Arabia, this video will be a bit of a hard sell to try and coax the FIA, Liberty Media, and all the rest of the evil overlords into returning to Africa. The first official African Formula 1 race took place in 1958 in Casablanca, Morocco. Held on the Ein Diab street circuit, the Moroccan Grand Prix served as the final round of the 58 season, and was the venue where Mike Hawthorne won his first and only World Drivers Championship. It was not a particularly memorable venue, aside from Pretty Boy here winning his Vars, with the only other mention it gets being because of the death of Stuart Lewis Evans. Formula 1 would not return to Africa until 1962, when the championship embarked on its first voyage to South South Africa. The circuit they used was the Prince George Circuit in East London. No, no, not that East London, but a city on the southeast coast of South Africa. Having said that, the circuit was that boring it may as well have been held in Stratford anyway. Interesting thing about that race was that it was held on the 29th of December, smack bang between Christmas and New Year's. Why is that important? Well... It isn't really important to be honest. But in any case, the race was run at the venue again in 1963 and 1965 before finally being dumped off the schedule. Africa was once again without a race in 1966, although Formula 1 would return in 1967, this time at the Kyalami circuit in Johannesburg. This ultra-fast circuit played host to some amazing races, and remained on the calendar until 1985. However, there was an issue with running a race in South Africa during these times. Apartheid was still in effect in South Africa, and the tension within the nation and abroad was reaching ugly levels. In the final race during Apartheid in 1985, several teams boycotted the event and remains a black mark on Formula 1's record to this day. 1976 world champion and chick magnet, James Hunt, was vehemently against the idea of racial segregation and spoke out against Apartheid even when calling the races live. Whenever his commentaries were broadcast in South Africa, he gave his fees toward groups looking to facilitate change in the country for the better. But hey, keep politics out of sport, right? And by 1985, Formula 1 had also had enough. They announced they would not return to the country during apartheid, and once again, Formula 1 was without a race in Africa. But before Matt Damon received a Golden Cup from Morgan Freeman in 1995, it was announced that Formula 1 would return to South Africa to once again act as the opening round for the championship. It wouldn't last long, however, as the country would only host two Grand Prix in 1992 and 1993. And to be honest, the races weren't that interesting, although that may have been somewhat down to the Williams being more dominant than- no, wait, hang on, I can't do that joke. Since the 1993 race, however, Formula 1 has not returned to the continent of Africa for a race, which I find sad. I mean, no offense to any Saudis out there, but we're on the brink of venturing to Saudi Arabia for a Grand Prix in 2021, yet we still omit Africa entirely from the schedule even after 27 years? Okay then, Mr. Funny Bitmoji Man. If Africa returns to the Formula 1 schedule, where should it go? Well, the answer to that question isn't really straightforward, because while Formula 1 really does need to go back to Africa, any country that wants a Grand Prix must have an FIA Grade 1 facility to race on. And right now, there are none in Africa. So from the get-go, this idea is already more flawed than giving Max Verstappen a microphone. But let's say that we could build a circuit to meet these standards. Where would you build one? Well, two of the more realistic and most probable venues are in Morocco and South Africa, two countries that had previously held Grand Prix. With Morocco, there is an interest to host a race in Marrakesh, a place that currently hosts a round of the Formula E Championship, and before that, the World Touring Car Championship. The 1.8 mile track is too short, that's what she said, for Formula 1 racing. Although this could be amended by upgrading the facilities, I guess? The location of Morocco would also be appealing, given its proximity to Europe, which would make it legit easier for the championship to make the trek to the continent. But then there is the question of what having a race in Morocco would add to the Formula 1 calendar other than just being in Africa. I mean, the only Moroccan to compete in Formula 1 was Robert Lacaze, and he wasn't even Moroccan. So then we must turn our attention 
to South Africa, home to rugby players, prawns, and my favourite meme of all time. South Africa has a history in motorsport as rich as its diamond one. It had hosted 23 Formula 1 Grand Prix and is the birthplace of 1979 world champion Jody Schechter. And even today, this country still produces a lot of exceptional talent, such as Kevin and Sheldon van der Linde, Callan O'Keefe, Adrian Zalg, Jonathan Aberdeen, Keegan Masters, Raul Hyman, Jordan and Tasman Pepper, just to name a few. As for where a modern day South African Grand Prix could be held, there are two possibilities. The first is a street race in Cape Town, although talks of this have gone quiet as of late, so instead the best option would most likely be at the Kailami circuit in Johannesburg. Now, while the circuit, facilities and such are all good, the venue doesn't hold an FIA Grade 1 license that's required to host a Grand Prix. You'd be wondering if all hope is lost for a race in South Africa. Well, not quite. The FIA are very keen to make a trek to the nation for an African return, and Toby Venter, CEO of Porsche South Africa and owner of the track, expressed interest in raising the standards of the track to comply with FIA Grade 1 standards, provided there is a promoter who will organise the event and holds long-term aspirations to keep it running. So there is definitely a possibility that a race could happen here, but it's a matter of whether or not the relevant people will fork out the dough to host a motor race where 20 rich eunuchs drive in circles for two hours. Understandably, that doesn't sound like a particularly good pitch, but there is a man out there who has vouched for a race in Africa. It's such an important place to go back. At the moment, Form 1 goes to countries and doesn't really leave much behind, if anything. Form 1 has to shift into being a sport that does go to places and leaves beyond, behind something that can really help the communities. And I think bringing for us the attention back into, uh, into Africa and really highlighting the beautiful place that it is. I think that's the most important place that we have to go to. It needs to be held where it's not all about money, it's about, it's about the people. You know, in business that's not always the case. So again, that's something I'm really pushing for. That's something we should all be pushing for. Let's find the missing piece of the puzzle and bring the Grand Prix circus to this vast continent. Let's make this a true world championship. And if all of this is still not enough, I've collaborated with a fellow YouTuber to create a little ditty that will change your tone. As sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus over the Serengeti. Just do what's right Sword cups, Kyle, I mean 